Hello beautiful souls and welcome to our new moon reading. We are feeling some very yummy watery vibes today as we connect into this beautiful cancer energy. So we're starting with the Oracle of the Mermaids because why not? We are going to tap into this beautiful sort of emotional kind of really fluid energy that is calling in today. So we're going to be doing a collective reading at the beginning, which is just a very general collective reading. And then we're going to go into some more personalized messages by using a crystal selection. So after the general reading, I'll display the three crystals and then you can go to the timestamp of which one of those crystals you'd like to receive more personalized messages to bring some more energy into this to make it a little bit more specific for you and your personal journey. So let's get started with our beautiful mermaid oracle. Let's get some watery vibes for this new moon. What do we need to see here? The message I'm receiving just as I'm sort of connecting in and shuffling here is it feels like if you allow any old emotions to just be in flow as they rise to the surface, it feels like old emotions might be revisited over the next couple of weeks. There might be some old emotional energies that just wants to be present, wants to be seen, definitely between the new moon and the full moon energy. It just feels like over the next couple of weeks. If there's something that's coming up that you maybe feel like you've dealt with or that just is bringing a new level of awareness, there's just these old kind of older emotional states that are rising right now, but they just want to be moved with fluidity. They don't want to be like gravitate, like grabbed onto or attached onto. It's just like allow them to rise, allow them to recede, just really moving with the flow of the emotions that's coming up here. Let's get our opening messages though. What do we need to see? I shouldn't say that because that was an opening message, but let's get some cards. First one we have is divination, prophecy, fate, destiny, future, fortune. Let's get three of these. What else can we see here from the mermaids? We have divine sensuality, making love, erotica. And we have... We have endurance. Keep going. So it definitely feels like a nice sort of soft, gentle energy coming through this month just to sort of start the, the process, start the energetics. Sometimes it can be a little bit more intense. Other times it can be just that little bit subtler. And what I'm really feeling with this is that there is new new sort of energy around stepping into more of your sensual self. This more feels like a self-embodied like sensuality, awakening that inner eroticism and allowing yourself to be more fluid and flowing with that. Our beautiful Shakti, sacred, sensual energy is very fluid. It's very flowing. It has this kind of energy of fire attached to it, but it's definitely a watery energy. So allowing yourself to be really more open and receptive to how you're being guided to connect into those sensual energies. And really, it's like the way I'm feeling it is like learning how to make love with life, learning how to make love to self in a way that is embodying the entire kind of aspect of your divine nature. When we really feel into sensuality, sensuality is really when we look at it from a higher perspective is our ability to sense the world through our five senses or our six senses and it's the way we respond to those senses is the embodiment of our sensuality and that's what this really feels like allowing yourself to be a little bit more connected to how you're responding to the senses around you how you're moving with that how you're allowing that to flow through you and also this energy of keep going saying it's like no matter how far you are you've come like remember that you are resilient you have everything you need within you to keep going on your journey with this divination energy coming through it's a really this one's quite it's it feels like the most the most multi-layered energy in those three cards and this really feels like a new awareness of your fated path is going to be coming in. It's almost like for some, I feel like there'll be like jumping timelines, doing quantum jumps of, it's almost like you won't even recognize the new path that you are on because you're jumping into the correct timeline of what you were always meant to be here to do. And so this one feels like for some, it might feel like a very intense shift in pathways in sort of like following, following that soul knowing and really jumping into the truth of what you're here to do. But it really does feel like quite intense, really quite intense um, quantum jumps coming through for some. Now, there are there is a difference between timeline jumps and quantum jumping or quantum leaping. And it might be that you might notice just a small sort of difference. It might not be that you quite recognize exactly what's going on or who you are, but you still have an awareness of the things that are around you. 
the other side of it could be that you kind of step into this new energy of going, wow, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't know what is like what is coming through for me. I don't even know what I'm meant to be doing or what pathway I'm meant to be on. And each of those kind of gives you a bit of an indication as to how much of a leap you have taken in your journey. So that's kind of how we, we're seeing these first energies here. Let's get some beautiful messages. Let's get some pairing messages. We're going to get two pairing messages for each. What else do we need to see about this prophecy and fate, this destiny, this future fortune? It says, oh, tower. So we have tower coming through and we have messenger of earth. So there is definitely some new energy that is going to be coming through, but only when you allow things to crumble, when you allow things to let go. And it could be your beliefs about what you are holding the potential to or what you have available to you that could be a belief that you're letting go of letting go doesn't always have to be a hard thing it doesn't have to be a sticky thing it doesn't always have to feel like I'm letting go of you know negative things or things that don't serve it can be letting go of ideas and beliefs that are actually limiting us in our worth in our self-love anything like that and I feel like there's a lot of tower energy around that there is a lot of crumbling around those kind of limiting beliefs that are actually keeping you stuck and stagnant in being able to step on more of that fate to destiny path. And then also what I'm really seeing is that this energy is going to start grounding in, but in order to ground, it needs space. So this tower is like clearing space, making space for new energies to be really, really grounded and really deeply embodied. It feels like this like permeating through the soil, permeating through the, the earth's layers is like this is how this energy is grounding in. It's gradually going to get deeper and deeper and really anchor in, but it needs to have enough space. It needs to have enough sort of clear energy so it can find the nutrients it needs to really anchor in this new destiny path. So, oh, I like that message. Okay, divine sensuality. What can we see here? We're going to get two extra messages with this. Mm, interesting we have the five of water watery very watery today and we have the four of water so really feeling into these cards of yes it could feel like missed opportunities maybe you feel like you've missed your opportunity for reclaiming that sexual nature maybe you feel like you've missed missed your pathway missed your opportunities to really embody your full eroticism but this for me is like there's no more lamenting here there's no more wishing in the past it's really allowing yourself to connect into what you want instead of what has not been or what you may feel like you've missed there's no it's like there's no missed opportunity here is what I'm hearing. You haven't missed the boat. Allowing yourself to connect into your true expression. If you're struggling with that, the goddesses that I work with personally to work in that kind of frequency, you know, we have the beautiful Lilith, of course. Lilith is our, you know, our divine sexual liberator. She is the one who awakens that energy within us. We can also work with the goddess in Yana or Ishtar. Those are like my three favorite goddesses to really focus on the frequency of our liberated sexual energy to bring that into a more sort of mature state within a more balanced state. You can also call in Aphrodite to work in that energy. Yes, I'm feeling very goddess vibe today. So I'm going to work with a lot of the goddesses. We're going to speak on to whoever wants to come through just because it's so present today, really feeling into how you become the highest version of your embodied self here. But there is nothing that you can't reclaim now. Just because you might have missed the boat previously doesn't mean you can't jump into the next one. And it's a really silly analogy, but that's how I'm seeing it. But don't allow yourself to miss the next opportunity. Like claim it, grab it, embody the fullness of who you are, of who you came here to be. Okay, let's have a look at this endurance energy. What is that bringing to the surface? What do we need to see here? Ooh. Okay. Oh, I love these cards. These are beautiful for our endurance energy. Ace of Fire. And then we have the, the Call. So, what I'm really feeling with this is if you feel like you've run out of steam, if you feel like you've run out of energy, if you feel like you've endured as much as you can and you've been swimming upstream, you've been trying to fight that current and you are battle weary and a little bit worn down, 
to really call upon that inner fire. You can call upon that inner Shakti. You can call upon just the internal flame in whatever capacity it is, but really calling on that inner fire to give you that charge, that boost to go after what it is that you are here to always do. That call energy to me, this is normally the judgment card. And I love this because this is an awakening, but it's it's awakening you to your true path, awakening you to your true purpose of what you are always meant to be here for. And it's like lighting that fire within you. What I'm really seeing with this, it's like if you can connect into that inner soul calling, that will give you every bit of inner sort of stamina to keep moving forward. Don't allow that energy to kind of become stagnant or to dim out too much. And if it has, how can you reignite it? How can you refuel that inner fire to keep going? You know, when we have a look at these journeys and they can be very, very challenging and very arduous journeys. And it's when we get to that point of, I don't know how much more I can take. I don't know how much further I can go. Like how much longer do I need to stay in this before I understand what my call is, whatever it might be. When you, that, when you get to that moment, you either choose to keep fighting, push through and find that last thread or that last ignition of inner fire that you need to go that next layer, go that next level, or you choose to just like lay back and float in the ocean for a little while. Which one of them will you choose to do? Some of, sometimes we do need to just take a rest. Other times calling upon that inner strength, that inner courage, that inner resilience to say, I can keep going no matter what is coming forward for me. It does feel very, very... Um, there is such a beautiful kind of a beautiful fluidity to this energy today, obviously because we are connecting to that cancer energy, but it feels very like it doesn't feel so intense. It feels like allow yourself to also be carried a little bit that the waves of the ocean can support you and move you forward. You don't have to do all of this alone. Can you trust that you can be in in the current with the universe? versus trying to always swim upstream? Can you allow that sense of surrender? Can you allow that sense of deep trust? What does that look like for you? Okay, let's get some more messages here for this beautiful new moon. What can we see here? Just you know, this one needs a little bit more of a shuffle. What can we see? We have turquoise sea. We're going to get four of these. Oh, beautiful. Turquoise sea, Luna and power and butterfly wings really really interesting messages coming through with that i just wanted to grab the little guide book for our lunar card because that actually does have a really beautiful passage a beautiful sort of little um prose piece that i'm going to read out when we have a look at this turquoise sea energy this is really connecting us to how we are Wanting to heal relationships with others versus how we are focused on healing the relationship with self. Whatever you are seeing in your external relationships is a reflection on what is going on within. And sometimes that can be challenging for us to hear. But what I'm really seeing at the moment over the next few weeks, focus on how you're healing that, like that relationship, that connection with yourself. Focus on any emotions that are coming up as I said at the very beginning this sort of like these wave of emotions that will kind of rise over the next couple of weeks allow yourself to connect to how that is relating to you and how you can heal that within yourself a little bit more and that will then create kind of this ripple effect on how you're really focusing on the relationship with others the lunar I'm going to read out power obviously is reclaiming our inner power this is like for me again this is this spark this real ignition sort of point within of reclaiming that solar plexus energy, focusing on the internal power, focusing on the flame as it really rises within you. Butterfly wings is really about our transformation journey. So new 
I want to say like new codes of transformation are coming through. That's how the message is, is landing. But new codes of transformation are coming through. So if you feel like you've been through a really deep transformation journey and you're stepping into your quote unquote butterfly era or your butterfly wings sort of space, know that there might be new energies that are coming through to show you how to like live in that energy. Not to say that more transformation is necessarily coming, but just to show you like how do you actually live in this newly transformed state is how I'm seeing that one. But I want to read this Luna because I think it's really beautiful. And the song, there's a song called, um, oh my God, I can't remember what the song's name is. I think it's called La Luna. But it just says, like the, the opening line is, um, La Luna. God, I don't know what the name of the song is. I think it's La Luna. But that's the song I'm hearing in my mind. I'm just seeing it and feeling it, but I can't pick the words and that's okay. Um, but you can always go and, and just type in La Luna and see what comes through. It's a female vocal um, and it's just a very, very beautiful sort of soft song. But feeling that reflection there. But it says here, believe in yourself for you are a wonder of creation. Let go of fear and you'll discover a shining star. Trust in the healing power of love for you are an ocean of light reflecting the light of the sun, universe and stars. The flame of love resides in your heart. It engulfs all on its path. Through this light, new stars are born, explosions of love, a glowing heart that moves the ocean tide, one eternal heart forever bathed in light, the night sky a tapestry of jewels, dewdrops form an ocean. Starlight fills your heart with the glow of ancient suns. Through trees, mountains and valleys, you shine eternally bright. And then the final part says, this card is a blessing from the universe. Feel each word resonate inside your heart. But that's the message of that card is that you are the embodiment of everything that is. But I just love the way that it's been written there. So I wanted to share that. But allow yourself to connect into that, that you have within you. You have the universe within you. You have the connection to all of these kind of star seed energies, these star races, which is probably why it's very interesting that I was guided to pull this deck out. Even though it didn't fit my watery vibe, I was told to pick out, pull out the Pleiadian star oracle. So that's what we're going to be doing. Let's get some cards from this. What do we need to see about this energy? We're going to get four of these as well. So first one we have is the Holy Child, Star Seed, and it says, I am a divine child of the universe. And then we have the Seven Sisters Circle, Sisterhood Enriches My Life. And we have the Star Mother, Loved, the Universal Mother, Loves and Supports Me Totally. And we have the Empress of the Night, Finale, After the Storm, I Emerge a Shiny New Star. So... The way I'm really feeling this is one, connecting you into that star seed energy, that you are loved and supported, that you have everything you need within you. What I'm really feeling with this sister sort of circle, this circle sisterhood vibe is actually more around your team of like your team of light, your spirit team, whatever you want to connect to. They are supporting you right now if you're willing to listen to the messages and the guidance. But how I'm really feeling all of this is that if you can connect into the fact that you know that you are the embodiment of the universe, that you are embodiment of the divine, that you hold that frequency within you, you hold everything you need within you already to go after what it is you desire. Yes, it might be challenging. Yes, you might have to you know, go through a few ebbs and flows, but you are being guided. The, the message I'm really hearing with this Empress of the Night, and this is kind of the message that just superseded everything else with these four cards, is it's time to take your bow. When I saw that finale word, it was like, it's time to take your bow. You've reached the end of this of this act. You've reached the end of this play, right? And it's time now to take a bow so you can start something new. Take a bow, celebrate what's been, embrace that finale if you're willing to see that, you know, you can close out that chapter, you can rewrite that book, you can move into a new act or a new play whenever you decide to. But taking that bow is like allowing yourself to honor everything that you have achieved up to this moment and allowing yourself to embrace it's time to start something fresh. It's time to start something new. Imagine yourself standing on a stage right now and you're taking that final bow and there is like just this absolute 
Ah, like this absolute showering of roses and flowers just being thrown onto the theatre stage. And this is for you to really celebrate. The universe is celebrating you right now to say, take that bow. Look at what you've already achieved. Look how far you've come. And it's okay now to walk away from that and start something new. It's time to move on from that play and start a new play. That's really how I'm feeling with that one. It's very, very beautiful energy there. So definitely feeling this sort of embracing the, the flow of the emotions that are arising, embracing the fact that you have everything you need within you, and then starting to emerge into this sort of new, this new emerged version of self with these butterfly wings coming through here. So that's our opening messages. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to pause. I'm going to remove all of these cards and we're going to put the crystals up so you can choose a crystal and your crystal will be the one that will connect to for the next part of the reading to give you more sort of personalized insight of how you can work with this energy. Okay, so our three crystals we're going to be working with today, we have our green calcite, we have an amethyst and we have a smoky quartz. So allowing yourself to take some time to choose which crystal would be the most aligned for you. And then we're going to get into the reading. So I'm just going to leave it here just for a moment. Have a bit of a feel into the energy. What do you feel like you need the most right now as you sort of connect into these crystals and these energies? What messages do you feel like you need to receive? And let's begin with our first one. So for those who chose the green calcite, we are going to get some additional messages here. What do you need to see for this new moon journey? So we have homeland, arrival, a journey ends, establishment, building, settled. And then we have visions, psychic images, clairvoyance, seeing, out-of-body travel. So you might be doing some astral projection. You might be really focusing on your clairvoyance. You might be really noticing a difference in how your spiritual gifts are activating right now. But what I'm really feeling with this as well, when it says out-of-body travel and we've got this homeland energy, what I'm really seeing is that your soul knows where its home is. Your soul knows what journey it's meant to be going on. And I really feel like there's this almost this awakened awareness, this very, very, it's almost like this really illuminated awareness within that the soul is very, very clear that it knows where its home is and it knows where it's trying to go and it knows what it's bringing forward. And it's just like the humanness is just catching up right now. That's really how this message is coming through. It's really sweet and beautiful. But you might really feel into different images. You might be having dreams. You might be feeling into like prophecies and things sort of landing that may feel a little bit strange. They may not make sense. And what I'm hearing with that is that these messages are actually your soul trying to show you where it wants to go in order to get to that homeland, in order to get to that place where you feel like this is what I've been searching for. This is what I've been working towards. This is where I've been going And the other thing I'm really picking up with this as well, so this will only resonate for those who can who connect to this, but if you've been doing any out-of-body sort of work, astral projection, sort of travel kind of energy, what I'm really feeling with this is just be very mindful that you're fully grounding back in. So for some, it might be that if you're doing any of that kind of work, that maybe you're not grounding as much as you need to. And there are like, the way I'm seeing this is like, soul fragments that are dispersed throughout the 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 universe uh, throughout the cosmos and we just need to draw them back in really grounding that in there is a practice on the um youtube meditation playlist it's called i think uh soul fragment retrieval and for some of you i feel like that might be really really powerful to just bring that energy back in to make sure that you are fully fully integrating every time you do any of that kind of work and really making sure that you are deeply deeply grounded back Sometimes for me when I do any of that kind of work and when I go into very prophetic dreams, so sometimes I have very, very, um, they're, they're very much prophecy dreams because every single one of them has come true. Um, and that's a very different feeling to when I dream, to when I dream normally. 
And when I do have one of those dreams specifically, that is very much a future experience dream that I'm bringing back into the now and they are always um, experienced in my reality. It can take me up to maybe an hour and a half, sometimes to two hours to fully land back in my body and to fully ground in. And I feel completely out of whack. I feel like I'm not myself. Nothing feels like it's fully stable within me until I do my grounding work with that. As soon as I do my grounding work, everything kind of like restabilizes and balances. But if I try to go about my day, if I've had one of those dreams, if I try to go about my day without fully grounding it in, it can be very, very, um, very, very discombobulating. And it's like, is it, is it my reality? Is it someone else's reality? Like, what am I tapping into here? So really making sure if you do any of that kind of work to ground in. For some people, that is a very strong message. Whoever needs to hear that, that's just a really, really strong message there. But what I'm really seeing with this is your soul is craving its homeland. And every single dream, every insight, every vision, everything you're receiving right now is helping you get there. So if you are maybe blocked in your open sort of your intuition, your clear senses, really work on that. Allow yourself to become more in tune with your clear senses or do some activating work to open yourself up to receive more of them so you can get more guidance from your soul to direct you onto your correct path there. Okay, what else can we see with the for our green calcite group? What else can we see here? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling so much crown activation work right now. So again, for anybody in this group, you might want to do some soul star activation to support you in really opening you up to receive more of your gifts. Our soul star is that needs to be kind of activated before our causal and our crown can really receive this information and our third eye can really sort of embody it in the physical, in the human form. But I'm just feeling like soul star and crown activations really, really strongly right now. So connecting into that, again, there is a meditation on the playlist for Soul Star Activation and there's a Crown Chakra one as well. But feeling into what you need to do for yourself to really open that up. But I'm just hearing like, it's like, it's almost like the universe is saying it's story time. We want to tell you a story. We want to give you more awareness and information, but you need to be open to receive it. Okay, what else can we see? Let's get four. We have... I love this, exposed and revealed with that beautiful eye. Your third eye is illuminating. Your third eye is opening more. We have beautiful uncaging. Oh, beautiful uncaging. So the song that's coming through with this, I'll get into the messages in a moment, but the song that's coming through with this beautiful uncaging is, I think it's called A Beautiful Noise and it's from Alicia Keys and Brandy Carlisle. And um, it's, it's basically like, I have a voice. Started out as a whisper, turned into a scream, made a beautiful noise. Uh, that's how this feels. This, this awakening, that voice awakening, more of your truth is being revealed right now. But I'll get into the actual card message as well. But if anyone likes the songs that we channel through um, and the messages that come through that, a beautiful noise, Alicia Keys, Brandy Carlisle. And then we have broken open. That's so beautiful. I love the fact that we've got beautiful uncaging and then broken open coming through. And this is really showing us that this heart is wanting to be completely unlocked here. We are allowing this new energy to fully illuminate the heart. And we have bearing fruit. This was really, really beautiful energy. So for our green calcite group, what I'm really seeing with this is that there are new, there are new truths. There is new insight coming through, but you need to be open. You need to be allowing yourself to receive that. And the way I'm seeing this as why you might be resisting, if anybody feels like they're doing the inner work on their third eye and doing the inner work on their awakening and doing their inner work on, you know, really illuminating that sort of space within and opening up to more of their clear senses, the reason you might not be getting the result that you desire is because your heart is still resisting. When we have fears around our clear senses and our spiritual gifts and our intuition and channeling and all of that kind of stuff, when we have fears around that, fears around persecution, fears around being judged, fears around rejection, anything like that, we actually block that from fully landing and the heart space remains a little bit resistant. And because I'm seeing these, both of them are showing with the heart, what I'm really, really feeling is that if you are missing that connection to that channel, 
oh my god, I've just seen something I've never seen before. If you're missing that connection to that channel, opening up the heart, maybe you need to do heart chakra work to really allow yourself to fully ground in your intuitive abilities. It's you know one of the things that I teach in our course, Awakening the Spiritual Gifts or Activating the Spiritual Gifts. It's all about how we actually ground our intuition and our clear senses and our ability to receive those messages through the heart center. For me, if I'm ever feeling a little bit resistant in the heart, if I'm ever feeling like a little bit too emotional or anything like that, I don't channel. I don't try to tap into messages. I still download things. I still receive messages, but I don't give those messages out. I don't write them down for myself. I don't take them as, you know, these are the messages I need because the heart can throw things out of balance because it might still be operating from a place of fear. Your heart needs to be open and receptive and really, really... I want to say free of all that sort of caged energy, free of all the armor so that your heart can really receive the messages and you can deliver them even to yourself with more love without feeling like you are punishing yourself or hurting yourself or berating yourself for not, not doing things quicker or better. But I do just want to point out this one little thing because I've never seen this before in this card and it can sometimes be just the way that the, the card is laying and my eye will just catch it. And some people, if you've seen this deck and if you've used this deck, maybe you've seen it before. I find new things all the time in cards because no matter how much I work with a deck, there's always something new to discover. And I don't know if you can see it, but just in here, there's some wings. And there's the person. Or the, and it feels like a little angel is actually in the, in the center there. The other energy I'm getting is Mother Mary. From that and it almost looks like hands in prayer I, I honestly think that is an angel with hands in prayer interesting I just wanted to check the book the little guidebook because it's one that I don't read very often I, I very much use this deck extremely intuitively I very rarely will read the guidebook I was like I wonder if it says anything about a little angel or mother Mary or anything in there but no it doesn't it's just something I've never seen, never noticed, and maybe that's a message for someone. Maybe you work with angels a lot, maybe you connect with Mother Mary's energy a lot, I don't know, but for some reason that message is very, very strong there as well. So allowing yourself to really connect into your heart, what do you need to clear? Is there anywhere you're self-sabotaging? Are you needing to have more sort of open communication with yourself or another? And then we have this beautiful energy of bearing fruit. And what I'm hearing is the more truthful you can become with yourself, the more truthful you can become with how you're receiving the messages and how you're stepping forward in your path, the quicker you will be able to actually bloom and bear this fruit. When I saw this one here, obviously for me, it's like allowing yourself to really bloom as the lotus. As that lotus rises, you begin to bloom more fully. And then we pull the bearing fruit card and it's like allowing yourself to really connect into that heart space will allow you to bear that beautiful fruit. And I'm just seeing so many different things in these cards today that just sometimes we don't see. And I'm really seeing this one as well. So again, only take this if this resonates because I don't think this is going to be for everybody. This will be for only a couple people. But what I'm really feeling with this is actually a very strong owl spirit. And there's obviously a little butterfly in here as well, but I'm really feeling an owl spirit. I'm actually seeing two owls, which I've never noticed in this deck before. First one, mother owl up here, the eyes buried behind that that tree and then the little bubba that's how i'm seeing it so if the owl is one of your spirit guides i feel like this is a very strong message for you and i'm just seeing so much wisdom in this of how we bear fruit wisdom in the seasons wisdom in how we are really journeying in our timeline in our cycles of life i love that message and we're just going to get one final message here which deck are we going with? Go and go with this one. One final message here for our green calcite group. What do we need to see? We have five of cups. Okay, so the message I'm hearing with that is if you keep focusing on where it's not blooming, where you've lost fruit, where you've lost flowering, where you've lost things in the past. You're missing one, you're missing what's already, like what's still in the branch there. But what I'm really seeing with this one is if you keep focusing on 
like our seasons of winter, for example, of how there is no fruit, of how there is no blooming here, you won't see when that, that first spring blossom blossoms, right? So the way I'm really feeling this is allowing yourself to connect into the season and cycle that you're in, remembering that every single winter there comes a spring. No matter what sort of phase you're in, no matter where you are in your journey, every season has its its cycle. Every season has its its beautiful kind of closing out energy. So take that as it resonates. Green calcite, I want to say group one, but it is group one. Green calcite, group one. Take it as it resonates. If you would like to go along and listen to any of the others, if you feel like you want to get more information from either of the other crystals, by all means do that. Otherwise, everything else, if you want to book a session, if you want to connect with me for any of the, the different things we've got coming up, by all means, everything is always listed in the description box below. Sending you so much love, beautiful group one, and we'll connect again soon. Okay, for those who chose the Amethyst, our group two, we're working with this beautiful Amethyst energy here. Now, before I even start this, as soon as I was packing up the first group and getting prepared for our group two, our Amethyst, I heard a song come through, which is I Shall Believe by Cheryl Crow. And it's like, again, it's such a beautiful old song, but it's just very, very, it's just this, it's almost like a lullaby for the soul is how I'm feeling it. Remembering that when you, when you either receive guidance from the universe, when you tap into your truth, like, will you believe it? The song is so beautiful. It's like, come to me now. And lay your hands over me. Even if it's a lie, say it will be all right. And I shall be me. God, I have not heard that song in a long time. I'm so sorry about the way I sang that. But anyway, um, but it's basically, can you trust? Can you trust in what is being shown? Can you trust in, in that? Will you believe what I'm really hearing for some? Only take how this connects for you. But for some of you, I know this will resonate. <sighs> Are you willing to believe in what your soul has to told you what is true up until now? Are you willing to stay the course of your journey? Are you willing to surrender, even if it doesn't make sense, even if it doesn't seem like it's true? Are you willing to believe in what the universe has shown you and how you're being guided? Hmm. <sighs> It's like, don't give up. You know, that now that song, Don't Give Up by, um, what is it, Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush, is coming through. Don't give up. You. It's like, like, don't give up on me. You can rely on me. You know that I'm here. Will you believe it? Like, there's such a strong energy for this group. So only take those messages if they connect for you. Let's get the actual card messages. What wants to come through here for our second group, our Amethyst energy? Hmm. Please say honestly. You won't give up on me, and I shall be me. That's the line of the song as well. Don't give up on me. Don't give up. Don't give up on me. Oh, okay. We have Sisterhood and Coral's Wisdom. I can't escape those two songs. I can't escape specifically that I shall believe. It's like it's just, it's there. It's playing. It's playing on my spine. The way I feel songs and receive song messages, it doesn't, it doesn't like come through in my, like it comes through as a clear audience, but it actually, it's like it feel, I feel it mostly on my spine and then I kind of feel the song within my nervous system and that's how like I receive the messages with the songs. I first kind of hear it as the auditory in that sort of periphery as clear audience and then I like feel, feel it mostly along my spine as the like the main awareness. But the way I'm feeling this song, it's like it's now permeating every single nerve and every single cell and there's no escaping it. And there's no denying that song. It's like there's no denying. I'm going to say this this message, so please only take this as it resonates. There's no denying this love. 
that's how that's coming through. It's like it's so permeated. It's so deeply embedded in your cells. It's like it is the fabric of who you are. Oh, what a message. Okay, what do the cards say? We have Coral's Wisdom, Sisterhood. We have uh, Colony, Delicacy, Fragility, Works that are created over great periods of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay that makes a lot of sense and then we have friendship allies compatible souls loyalty joy delight i am loving this message this is going to be a very specific message i can already feel it for those who are maybe connecting into a divine counterpart who are connecting into some kind of soul connection soul frequency whatever that is this message is for you if that doesn't resonate then this might not be the right crystal i would choose one of the other crystals because this feels very much connected to a soul connection this is a you know something that is created over time this is never giving up on this soul connection this is really anchoring in what is already embedded in your dna what is already embedded in your soul's code what i'm hearing here as well is that there are new like illuminated points within your DNA that are awakening to this soul connection that are fully anchoring this in. And it's like there is so much fine tuning that's taking place here. There is definitely a portal that we can feel. I picked up on that the other day uh, about a three week portal. But what I'm really seeing is like there is this DNA awakening through multiple channels through with multiple counterparts. That is really anchoring in new understanding of what soul union is meant to be, how that is meant to land, how that is meant to be showing up. Oh, and this is a joyful, it's a very, you know, it might be a connection that you have a very deep friendship with because we have friendship, allies, compatible souls, loyalty, joy, delight, someone that you've experienced a lot of joy with. But what I'm really feeling here is with that loyalty, it's like staying loyal to the connection without it taking you off your path. So we can't, you know, you can't be in the energy of staying fixated and anchored into something, but you can stay loyal to the connection and the understanding and the belief you hold and that feeling that you feel within you, but still moving forward with your life is what I'm hearing with that. So really beautiful opening messages there for this group. What we're going to do now is get four more of cards. We're getting four energy cards here. And I have used the cards. I've buried the cards that we drew in the very first um, reading in group one. Um, because I like to see if there's ever any, you know, repeating themes that are coming through for the collective. Sorry about that. I just dropped nearly all of the cards. Let's get some messages here. What do we need to see about this energy? We're going to get four. We have great big love. <laughs> I told you this, this reading was going to be very specific. I can feel it so strongly. We have tender embrace. <sighs> Thank you, universe, for showing us such a beautifully... A beautifully kind of concise, accurate reading. Healing the heart. And one more. And we have let it go. So what do we need to see with this? With this energy here. So what I'm really feeling with this is we have these strings, letting go of the strings attached, letting go of any strings attached to the love that you desire. That's what you're really being guided to let go of. Allowing yourself to really go into this space of, because we have three heart cards here and then we have this union energy. Like it's such a beautiful energy, but really I'm really feeling this expansiveness of anchoring in. If you can heal your heart, if you can focus on doing heart chakra work, heart alignment work, you can do heart chakra clearing and cord clearing between counterparts if that feels aligned to you. That can be really, really powerful. You can also do higher heart clearing work to really support that as well. 
But what I'm feeling with this is if you can really focus on healing your heart, clearing out any fear, resentment is a very strong word that wants to come through, any resentment you're holding, any anger, any doubt, any disbelief that this is actually a real soul connection. It's like you need to clear all of that out. Allow all of this energy to, energy to be completely debrided. The way I'm seeing this with this garden energy in the heart is all of the weeds, all of the potential like the potential sort of threads, it's like weeding everything out of the heart space, making that a really clean, beautiful energy, illuminating it a little bit more. But with the strings attached, because we have two hummingbirds, and hummingbirds to me is the representation of seeking the sweetness in life, right? So allowing yourself to let go of any strings that are attached to how this connection needs to look, how it needs to come into this beautiful union energy, letting go of the attachment, letting go of the strings, allowing yourself to be an open conduit of that love. Really like I'm seeing this as angelic love as well. Like I love how these messages and this pairing is coming through a more of a soul, spiritual union kind of love, right? Anchoring in that light illuminating down into the earth plane. That spiritual into physical 3D. But in the 3D, you can't have any of those strings attached. Allowing that to be completely severed. Allowing all of those strings to be completely let go of. So that you can really start to embrace more of a divine love. Open yourself up to receive that. And I love this kind of energy. I'm Today I'm really feeling into this particular deck and the messages I'm receiving from all of the different imagery because as I said in the first um, the first part, the green calcite pile number one, there was a card that I'd never, I saw something that I'd never seen before and every day I look at different decks, I always find something new but today I'm just seeing if we could take that green heart out, right, that beautiful lush green heart and because she's got that greenery all around her here. And it almost looks like butterfly wings, green butterfly wings blooming, but really focusing on that green. If we could just take that out and just pop it in there, see what could bloom within the heart space. Allowing yourself to be, you know, you could also see this as taking that heart energy and reweaving it back in. Don't allow yourself to get distracted by the external world or don't allow the external world to tell you that this isn't real. That's what I'm hearing here as well. Oof, big vibes from this amethyst group too what else can we see one final message here we have our queen of pentacles again we've got this beautiful earthing energy i'm feeling very earth vibe here earth energy grounding in anchoring everything in what i'm really seeing with this though as well with this queen of pentacles you know, it's this beautiful energy. I always connect to the Queen of Pentacles as she is the keeper of the hearth, right? It's stoking those home fires, those hearth fires within, allowing your heart to remain warm and tender and open. Don't close your heart off here. Don't close, don't close the doorway. Don't close to this potential. Allow yourself to keep the embers burning is what I'm seeing. And stoke that inner fire within the heart allowing that to be deeply nourished. It's like allow your, your hearth fires to stay warm and toasty and cozy and really that beautiful nurturing energy, very, very tender, compassionate, loving energy. And the way I'm really feeling this is like embracing this swathing, like swathed in this embrace energy of just warmth and tenderness and home. So it could be that you feel like this person feels like home to you that's that's another message coming through but this energy is very much about this is grounding in and I want to say for some finally right it's been very etheric it's been very spiritual it's been very in the 5d finally it feels like this energy is grounding in it's connecting in it's fully landing it's almost like you've gone through the lessons you've understood now that you need to be a warm nurturing safe place to come home to what a message what a message for pile two. I hope it resonates and connects. Always take only what resonates, leave what doesn't. If you would like to receive any further guidance, by all means, you can listen to either pile one or pile two. And if you would like to book a reading or anything like that, everything is always listed in the description box below. Group two, sending you so much love and let's get started into group three. Okay, group three, our beautiful smoky quartz. One of my favorite stones actually is smoky quartz. I just love it. 
Let's get some messages. What do we need to see for pile through? Pile through? Pile three, our smoky quartz energy. What do we need to see? I am hearing um, true colors coming through. Again, for those of you who connect to the songs, true colors shining through. What do we need to see? Oh, interesting message I'm receiving with this one. I want two, I want one more. Okay, so we obviously had True Colors shining through as the opening sort of song. And we have Caution, Secrecy, Wary. And then we have Sanctuary, Privacy. Oh my God, inviolate <laughs> personal space, respected boundaries and taboos. What I am seeing here with this and that song coming through is that someone's truth is going to be shown to you. It's almost like anything that has been secret, anything that has been hidden in the shadows, I'm really feeling this as being like maybe someone is trying to invade your personal space energetically. It's tightening up those boundaries as well. But anything that feels like it's been a little bit deceptive, it's been, you know, sort of hidden in the, I just keep seeing that hidden in the shadows, that someone's, you know, the way they're presenting themselves isn't really the truth. It's like there's a facade they're still putting up front. And this isn't a facade to protect them. This is a facade to like, to trick you in a way is how this is feeling. But there are going to be secrets that will be revealed, new truths that are coming to light. There is this kind of, you will see someone's true colors. You will start to see someone for who they truly are is what I'm seeing. And this could be in friendships, it could be in family, it could be in relationships, it could be in work. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. There's just this energy here. So if you feel like maybe something seems too, too good to be true, really connect in and see if it actually is. Are your boundaries being breached energetically? Is someone trying to invade your personal space? It's really interesting. The imagery that I'm seeing here is like a in the shadows, like lurking in the shadows is this puppeteering energy and like the strings that are attached there but you can't see the strings and you can't see them puppeteering because it's all like hidden in the shadows so there is definitely this energy that something is being hidden something will be revealed though and you'll start to see this this person it could also be a situation for what it truly is it doesn't necessarily have to be a person I'm definitely feeling a person but it might be a situation it might just be a you know more of a a physical situation in your life that you're going to start seeing more truth and awareness around of how someone might be breaching your boundaries or how they might be distorting the truth around you. That's our opening message there. Really interesting. Really, really interesting one. Okay, what else can we see? Um, what is that? I don't know what that song is. I've got a song playing, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Okay, so our additional messages here we have Roots of Abundance, we have Feeling the World. Ooh, definitely feeling something here. We have Awakening Genius. And we have a deep breath. So again, as I always say, only take the messages that resonate and connect for you. Leave whatever doesn't because this is a collective reading. Even though we're going into a deeper sort of thing and we're kind of getting a little bit more personalized, still only take what resonates. Because what I'm definitely feeling with this particular person who's watching this is a highly empathic person. So someone that is very sensitive, highly sensitive, highly empathic, but is maybe not very good with their boundaries. Maybe they're not very good with actually putting up a sort of a sense of protection of creating really strong boundaries within themselves, for themselves. Maybe they are still kind of in a bit of a masochistic, people pleasing sort of energy. And what I'm really seeing with this is that 
there is a, a new awareness coming through that you might understand that you have been manipulated, that you might be engaged in a narcissistic connection or energy. And again, this can be in work, it can be in family, it can be in relationships, it can be in any situation in your life. And remembering that when I say narcissistic tendencies or narcissistic traits or a narcissistic energy, we're not saying narcissist because not every person who exhibits narcissistic traits is a narcissist because every single being in this world has the capacity to exhibit and experience being a narcissistic sort of in a narcissistic energy or narcissistic traits, right? Depending on how wounded they are. But not every being is a narcissist if they're sort of exhibiting that. A lot of people have narcissistic traits or, you know, emotions or reactions or whatever it might be based on their wounding, but it doesn't make them a true narcissist. It's a, that's more of a rare thing. I speak about that a little bit because I know that there's a really strong energy around the collective that talks about empaths and narcissists, that an empath will always attract a narcissist. An unhealed empath will attract an unhealed, right, an unhealed person as well who can exhibit narcissistic traits. And that doesn't make them a true narcissist. So that's just something to think about as well. But this feels very much that you are going to start seeing someone's true colors. You are going to start seeing that you are being puppeteered, that you are being manipulated, that you might be being controlled in some way. But I want you to tune into that and ask, where am I allowing this to happen? Where are my boundaries not in, in check? Where am I allowing myself to feel everything and not have boundaries or a way to clear that energy. So it might be that you're not very good at clearing your field, clearing your energetic space. It might be that you're not very grounded, right, with this roots of abundance. It might be that you're not really allowing yourself to really connect in, truly ground yourself, know what your boundaries are, know what your needs are, honoring your worth, honoring your truth. And you're still just this open, receptive energy to anything that wants to come through but that isn't actually a healthy way to be an empath an empath has the ability a very a healed empath has the ability to feel everything to feel into people's energy to know if someone's lying to them i can pick if someone's lying to me instantly but i don't have to attach to that i don't have to take that on as my own right i can also feel if someone's grieving i can feel if they're joyful i can feel if they're sorrowful we can feel that in energy but it does not belong to us and we have to be really, really clear on setting those boundaries and clearing anything within the field that is making it a little bit more like more challenging for you to fully ground in your own energy and know who you are. So what I'm really seeing with this, with this deep breath energy, the way I'm feeling that today is to really focus on nervous system regulation, to focus on spending a little bit more time getting grounded in meditation, taking more time for deeper presence within to see where do I need to tune in more to my own boundaries? Where do I need to tune in more to my own field? Where am I still an open source? And I just keep feeling this like open source of energy for someone to just suck it up, to just drain you. But there's new insight landing. There's new awareness coming in. You are awakening to more comprehension of what this actually feels like, but also seeing your part in it, right? Seeing how you are reflecting, how you are being sort of awakened in this genius kind of energy, right? The more we understand our part in being a people pleaser, of being, you know, the quote unquote good girl, of always doing things for other people at the detriment of the self, which is a very empathic trait. It's, a, it's the humiliation wound trait. For those of you who are journeying in our shadow work journey, this is going to be very, very powerful for you because when we look at anyone who has an unhealed humiliation wound, this is what happens. This is how it plays out, right? An unhealed humiliation wound is the narcissist masochistic sort of connection which is the unhealed empath is the masochistic energy so when you connect into this the reason i bring that up quite a lot is because so many people that i hear they say oh, i'm an empath and it's such a burden i'm an empath and i'm just taking on everybody's stuff i'm an empath and you know it's so heavy and oh my god i don't know if it's my energy or their energy and that's exactly what it feels like when you're first learning that you're an empath and how you read the energy and how you connect into that. And then you have to learn how to protect, how to ground, how to clear, establish boundaries, right? All of those things allow you to become a very clear conduit of that energy without any attachment to it being yours, right? Whenever I work with people, if I felt everyone's energy now like I used to, 
the way I used to feel it, the way I used to like take that burden on as my own. And I'd get home and I'd be so overwhelmed and I would just feel like just anxious or sad or depressed or whatever it was like all the time of just feeling everybody's energy, feeling a lot of trauma because I do so much trauma work. And I really had to establish a better sort of clear foundation. So it took me a little bit to understand what I was doing and how I was doing it. And then I started to realize I can put these boundaries up. I can connect to that. Now the way I work, because I deal, still deal with a lot of trauma, I still deal with a lot of people's shadows and a lot of their wounding. And we, we do go into inner child sort of trauma. And we, you know, with every client that I read and do quantum energy for and everything like that, if I was still an unhealed empath, I would be completely energetically drained. Like it just, the word is annihilated. I would be energetically annihilated if I allowed that to still happen. So at some point you have an awareness to say, this is not healthy. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to feel these like open threads and these open ties and connections to everybody anymore, but I need to be the one that sets those boundaries. And this for me feels like you are starting to awaken to that. Breath work is going to be really important. Nervous system work will be really important. Grounding will be really important, but really getting clear on how you clear your field, how you ground your energy in, how you discern what is yours and what is someone else's is also really, really important. So when you feel something, you can kind of clear it and that takes practice. People ask me how to do that all the time. And it does take practice to figure out, is that my energy or someone else's? I have a very personal way of doing it, of feeling it. My When it's my energy, when it's my emotions, it hits me a certain way. When it's collective, it hits me a different way. So I actually feel it in a different part of my body. And it's a different feeling. It's a different frequency. It, it holds a different sort of energetic imprint when it's someone else's but it can take a little bit of time to get really clear on what that feels like for you and everybody's experience of that will be different so it's like you know we can give guidance and advice but no one else can really tell you how to work with that energy or how to like feel what it is for you because your experience will be so different to mine but you need to learn how to feel it if you want to work as an empath right if you want to really feel into that and work in that space and have stronger boundaries and have stronger, you know, a stronger yes and no to really know what you want for your life and not be willing to settle for anything less than that. Okay, let's see what else is coming through here. Final message for our smoky quartz, our beautiful energy here. So we have the two of cups. Interesting message that I'm receiving with this. Two of Cups is normally our spiritual union. It's a beautiful union card. What I'm actually seeing here is codependency, being entwined, right? So even though they're not Siamese twins, it feels like a Siamese twin today. How deeply entwined are you with another person? How deeply embedded is that sort of connection in your field? And it's like this codependent sort of trait that's that's it keeps repeating the same cycles over and over again. And it's like you finally find some separation and then you come back together. This can be in anything I'm feeling for some people. This is actually really focused on a work or a family situation, not necessarily a connection. But if it is a partnership, a love connection, something like that, then be very mindful of that as well. But I'm definitely feeling that it doesn't have to be that. This can be coming from anywhere. And it's like you get some space, they, they reel you back in. You get some space, they reel you back in, which is where this twisting energy is coming in. But I'm just really feeling this codependency, this like joint, like joint at the hip, right? No separation. There's like no, no personal sovereignty or entity here. And it, there's too much that has melded into someone else's reality or consciousness or energetic field that you need to start like unpicking those threads to pull yourself out of someone else's energetic field. So you know what is true for you. So that's how I'm feeling that final message there. What a message for group three. All the messages for pile one, two, and three were so different, so, so completely different. So I really do hope that gives you a little bit more further insight into your personal journey. Group three, sending you so much love. If you want to connect and listen to group a pile one or two for the green calcite or the amethyst, by all means, head over and do that now, allowing yourself to connect into what you need to at this time. And if you want to book a reading or anything like that, everything is always listed in the description box below. Sending you all so much love and I'll speak again soon.